Welcome to Crave the Book, episode 33. In today's episode, we're going to be covering chapters 67 through 69 of Tracy Wolf's Crush. And we get a little bit emotional because we're talking about little baby Hudson and little baby Jackson and their abuse situation growing up with Cyrus and Delilah as parents. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. What is up, guys? It feels like forever since we've been sitting in our seats with our microphones and our headphones because we recorded two episodes last time. So it's been a while. It's 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 been nice to return to our book boyfriend. Um <laughs> t- t- today's episode 33 and we're going to be covering chapter 67 through 69. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I am <laughs> I'm sad because the things that happened in the the like chapters following were way more sexy than chapter 69. <laughs> I know. 69 didn't have anything sexy, did it? I don't think so. No. No, it didn't. No. That's okay. Sad so, times. Well, guys, if you're listening for the first time, which I assume that you're not because it would be this is a really weird episode to I'm going to start listening to this podcast, but I'm going to start on episode 33. <laughs> like I mean, I mean sh- you never know. Like, some people might not realize that it's episodic. So they just kind of go, I'll listen to the latest one. Okay. And then, that but makes then sense. you wouldn't do that in a series, would you? No. Unless it was on TV. I'm going to start reading the Crave series, but I'm going to start with Covet. <laughs> like, <laughs> go backwards. Yeah. Um. So if for some reason you're strange and you're listening for the first time, there's a specific sound that you're going to want to listen out for to ensure that nothing gets spoiled for you. Amber, do you want to tell them what that sound is? Yes, like every other episode. And if you're new here, then uh, it sucks to be you. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, you got to listen out for the wolf howl and it sounds like this. Um, that means that everything previous will have been specific to the chapters that we have read today for you, um, which is again, 67 to 69, like Sala said at the intro. Um, and then if you hear that wolf howl, it means that everything afterwards is most probably going to be a spoiler. I do have some court spoilers in today's episode, so please try and drop out if you haven't read court yet or you haven't finished it, um, because I don't want to ruin your day, um. I have had series spoiled for me, and it's not nice. <laughs> and this is in the spoiler. I just scroll down to your notes. It's it's a doozy. So for reals, oh yeah. you guys are gonna want to bounce out because it's kind of a major point in court. But you won't miss much because we don't have a lot of spoilers, so you'll get to listen to most of the episode. But um, last we left off, Macy had I don't want to say accused Grace. She She was like, oh, I didn't realize that you and Hudson were so close after Grace was kind of talking about Hudson snarking on the Lou Dares field. And Macy was like, oh, you mean you mean Jackson? And Grace said, no, it's Hudson, Hudson. So that's where we have left off. And Macy is kind of suspicious that Grace might be catching the feels. For Hudson. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really funny because the way that Grace kind of defends herself is just like every other girl's crush. She's like, you like him. And he's like, no, I don't. Yeah. Well, he makes me laugh and he's super cute and we have lots in common. But no, no, I don't like him. I don't like him at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my no- I love that my note's almost identical. I s- close we're not close i mean sure he knows everything about me and he frequently comments on my underwear and i totally got super horny when he mentioned biting me but no 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 we're not close we're not close like (laughs) shut up grace yeah it's like (laughs) you know what's up because she (laughs) she realized at the end of that paragraph just how stupid she sounded yeah yeah it's like so defensive to the point where you're like "Mm, are you defending a bit too much because it's a bit too close to the truth there and i think macy understands because she kind of goes "Mm -hmm, i'm gonna have a shower yeah she just (laughs) leaves she's she was out of there and and then she's leaving them alone together (laughs) yeah and hudson's like brooding by the window yeah 
And even then she's like, I think he likes to do that because he likes to think of himself as like a Bronte hero. And it's like, you're already portraying him as a hero in your head. You're already looking at as he is the, um, the main character. Yeah. And that wouldn't be so unless she cared for him. And then even, even then he's still like looking over at her, like playing the part, like giving her the looks Making her laugh. He's making her laugh constantly. And that's what I love about his character is that even during super serious conversations, even when they get super serial. Super serial. He wants to make make sure that she is cared for and loved and cherished and that he can make her laugh. And it's really cute. Oh, you said the name. You said the name of the book. Yeah, Cherish. Yeah, and we've got uh, 90 days until Charm, I think. I think it was 90 days. That's what I saw on Facebook. Oh, we're going to have to kind of fit in another special episode at some point as well in our busy, busy lives. I oh my know. Gosh. At least we're almost done with Crush. The thing is, guys, it's not that we don't want to do it. It's it's very difficult for two busy people to arrange to be what? available at the same time. Um, and like, for example... We are recording two episodes back to back. I had to f- wait until, firstly, Starla was awake because <laughs> she's in a different time zone to me. Um, and also we had a 3D print going on in the room where we were recording. <laughs> so that had to finish. And it has been on for, ready for 27 hours, guys. I had to, <laughs> Anna, it's a dragon skull, by the way. It's well cool. And I will take pictures for everybody to see. It's really, really cool. Um, and it's for my bookshelf. It's going to go on my dragon shelf. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was printing. So we, we were literally f- started to record like 10 minutes after that had finished. Um, and now my husband is playing Dungeons and Dragons using this computer at 6pm. So we've got two and a half hours to get these episodes out. And it's all because we're trying to orchestrate around not just me and Starla, but also our husband's very busy lives as well. And it's like, oh, when are we going to do it? We, but and we, we had do to it read for you. before as well. We do it for you, and it's really fun to do. Yeah. It's just a, oh, no, where are we going to fit that in? Uh, yeah. It's it. This is like our second, I say second, but I've, it's definitely not my second job. I have, I have multiple jobs. So it's like our, our 10th unpaid job. Eventually we'll get the tenth. <laughs> yeah, I've I've got it's an escalation. Yeah, I I mean, of all the things that we do, it's probably your tenth too. But anyway, um, next few notes are yours. Yes. So, um, there is a bit where Hudson is staring out of the window, and Grace is realizing she's coming to terms with the fact that she, I think, she knows that she likes him, and that she can't really ignore him because he's in her head but then she goes oh maybe i should just ignore everything that he says and he turns around immediately even though he's ignored everything that she's been ruminating and discussing in her head up until that point and he just turns around and goes please never do that and um yeah i was just like oh like could you imagine like living with your husband and just ignoring each other but like deliberately not like Going, getting on with your own things or anything, but like deliberately tuning them out so that you would never listen to them ever again. Yeah, it's, I mean, everybody does like the silent treatment every once in a while, but like for us, it usually lasts all of about 30 minutes <laughs> and then we're back. Yeah, I think, I think that it's just a way of saying that he, he not just wants to be in her life, but he also like likes her enough that he wants to have conversations with her. Um, but yeah, he said that, and that really yeah. And um, and then Grace and him start a conversation where she says, "Why why would I trust you over my weight, my mate? Why why would I believe what you are saying over somebody that I have known for way longer than you?" Um, my my mate should be the person that I trust above all. And he gets really sarcastic about the fact that she used the term mate. And he's like, yeah, your mate um, in italics. And um, yeah, I have got some things for to put into the spoilers, but it's like a he's already kind of dismissing the fact that 
Jackson could be her mate. Um, there is definitely like the chemistry there that like physically and magically they are mates. There's there's no there's no way of disputing that, and yet he is. He's, so he must know more. He's dismissed their relationship multiple times now. Like when she gave Jackson power and they were texting back and forth. And he's like, oh, yeah, real great mate that you got there, Grace. Like, this isn't the first time yeah. that he just kind of, he dismisses it. Almost like when, like when you're... When you're a little kid and you're like, I have a boyfriend, and your parents are just like, oh, yeah, you've got a boyfriend. Like, but you're like a child, so they don't think anything of it. Yeah, it's a, it was completely not, not just dismissing the, the fact that Jackson is her mate, but also that Jackson is behaving like a mate. But Grace has no point of reference. She she doesn't know what a mate is supposed to do because the only person that she could probably relate to it being in the human world is a husband. And husbands aren't necessarily the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> <laughs> not a, there's not you let you don't have magical strings tying each other together no. where they can feed you energy. No, and there's definitely not, like, a telepathic link between them constantly where they can, like, discuss things. I think Farah and Reese's relationship, I think the reason why it works so well, even though it is a pretty toxic relationship, and I've seen a lot of people discuss it in um, in Akatar discussion groups, but I think the reason why it works so well is because they can communicate with each other telepathically, and also they can always tell what the other is thinking and feeling at that point. They don't have that issue of not trusting your partner enough to tell them how you're feeling, um, not feeling like they're a safe person to have that discussion with. And I think that Grace is currently having that with Hudson. It's because he 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 knows how she's feeling. She doesn't have it the same way because it's not a two-way street. Um, but with Jackson, he's constantly hiding things from her. He's not telling her the whole truth. He's not telling her about the world that they're living in. And, and I admittedly, it is a very quick and fast introduction to the world that they're living in. Um, but yeah, he's he's kind of keeping a lot from her and it doesn't really discuss how he's feeling. But yeah. then he's a vampire, so I don't know. <laughs> Well, so is Hudson, though. Mm -hmm. Hudson's at least yeah. trying. Um, yeah, and, and and Hudson's been dead for a year, so... I mean, for a corpse, he's pretty communicable. <laughs> very, very... I just, I, just, I, just, I just think that it's like... Mm, the way that her and Hudson have a, a conversation, the way that they interact with each other, the charisma that they have between each other... I don't necessarily think that it is all to do with their characters um, and personalities. Because you could put two people in a room that hate each other completely. Like, you imagine your worst enemy. Put them in a room with you and you will kill each other. You will rip each other apart. But if you had a telepathic link between you two where you each other could experience the other's emotions... Empathy is a great bridge to form a bond over. Yeah. Literally. literally. And, I, and I am um, just a little bit dubious as to whether Pharaoh and Reese's relationship and Hudson and Grace's relationship would have developed in the same way if they hadn't had that bond. No, I completely agree because she can't escape. It, it's almost like It's almost like a good thing. She, Grace cannot escape having to accept him because she is learning who he really is. It's almost like I watched, um, can't, God, I can't even remember where I saw it. It was somewhere on YouTube. I watched some documentary where it was like they like forced like scary like skinhead racist bikers to sit down with like just average black, you know, normal people and just have like a conversation and talk and you know the 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 black uh interviewees were just kind of sharing like their stories and 
by the end of it, like, all these big tattooed, like, racist dudes were like, yeah, I, 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 I'm wrong. Like, I've been wrong this whole time. Yeah. And it's just because they, you can tell that they've never talked to anybody. Yeah, but they formed, they formed a judgment about a completely, an, an entire community of people without ever have said yeah. anything. But sometimes them. it just takes sitting and listening to the other side with an open mind. And that's the problem in in any case like this, including Grace's, is that if you refuse to hear out the other side, if you're just like, no, you're evil, you're bad, you're I I refuse to listen, nothing you say is valid, then you will never be able to see that other perspective. And it's a really toxic mindset to have. Even I I will look at everybody that I don't like and try to understand them before yeah. i judge them i my i always which is a try true to... meaning of an empath which is the, tr yeah. the, the true meaning of an empath is that you can put yourselves in the shoes of another person even if you do not agree with the way that they are acting or behaving or or speaking exactly um, and i and i can do the same um and it infuriates people because they go well yeah but why can't you see it from my side and i i can but i can also see it from their side mm -hmm. um and I can see everybody in the room can have a completely different interpretation of the encounter or the situation and understand every single person is completely valid in the way that they reacted. It might not be the correct way of reacting, but I can completely see why they might have reacted the way that they did. Um, and yeah, like I, I just, it's, it's, it's something that I think that goes back to the, the idea that there, there is, three sides to every story there's your side my side and the truth because even if one person has a more accurate rendition of the story they're still going to be opinionated and they're still going to be biased towards them no matter how you write the story you cannot be completely biased in your own storyline yeah and you almost need an outside perspective to really look in and mm -hmm. that's why that's what a counselor is for those of you who like or or a therapist, you know, that's somebody who is on the outside looking in who doesn't already have any preconceived uh, biases, who is able to weigh in on your situation without political, religious or um, personal ties to what you're saying. And that's that's why it's always very important to make sure that if you're looking for a professional to talk to that you don't seek someone who has political religious or personal biases it's it's usually best to just yeah. have a stranger it's like um it's like being selected for a jury you never want somebody who has suffered um like sexual abuse being on the trial exactly. as a juror for somebody who is being tried for a sexual offense because they are always going to have the predisposition yeah to vote in a single way doesn't make it wrong because absolutely a sexual crime is reprehensible and and everything but that person is always probably going to have a more severe judgment because of their own past experiences exactly yeah and grace is i mean she her parents died and she knows people who have i mean flint's brother was killed she has people in her life that were directly affected by Hudson and she knows what she's seeing with her eyes and her, her, she's trying to, you know, convince herself not to believe what she's seeing based on what she's heard. And I mean, sometimes that's good. If, if you, if all of your friends are warning you about a guy and they're like, no, he is a dirt bag. Like, but please and, defend yourself. Yeah. Please and, don't. Please don't get hurt. Right. And you're just like, no, he's changed. Whatever you're saying. Like, I've been in that situation so many times. And it, it, it I always end up saying, man, my friends were right. Like, but yeah, at because, the same Because you also know that your friends probably have past experience with yes. that guy. Whereas Hudson, the only person that he's really interacted with is one dead. So Leah... And um, Flint's brother, they're both dead. Um, and Jackson, his brother, who was the person that killed him. 
everybody else is kind of outside of it and the reasons why Jackson killed him like no one's actually really said properly either side of the story um they've always tried to protect grace from the truth yeah and um yeah the way the way that hudson probably is skirting around it is probably testament to what grace comes to realize and uh, trying to be as spoiler free as possible but yeah she does come around to his way of of reasoning and deduction and it's because he didn't outright defend himself at every single given opportunity because actually that sometimes makes you seem even more guilty <laughs> yeah like if, if every time she accused him of being uh, evil or sarcastic or that he did the wrong things, if every single time he's like, no, 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 I, I didn't do that. I, I did this instead and, and this happened and then he said and then she said. He never did that at, at any point. He would just brood and kind of pass on the like the conversation and try and move on. And that actually probably made me believe him way sooner than had he defended himself at every opportunity. Well, this upcoming scene, I think, is what convinced... Because, I mean, even my first read-through, like, I was suspicious of Hudson. Like, I didn't want to be because I liked him. But I was still, like, I had that little bit of suspicion. But when he says, like... I can't remember what the line was exactly, but it was like, you know, you think Jackson is powerful. If you knew what I could do then you wouldn't be asking all these questions you would just know yeah and it's like oh yeah. shit what what can he do like <laughs> yeah yeah and then we get the glimpse of what he can do in the flashback well, grace starts like, falling asleep doesn't it because he he says um you're exhausted you should sleep and um just as she's drifting off he then lets a memory play out um because they had been not sharing memories, but Hudson gave the impression that he knew way more about her past life and her childhood than Grace knew he did. And not only was he was he playing the memories, but he was also saying that she gave him permission to view those memories um, and that he was only watching the ones that she had shared with him. And these were the most intimate, most embarrassing memories ever. And she's like, how... Why would I ever share these with you? And he's like, I think you need to ask yourself that. Why would you have shared these with me? And not like, Jackson. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, it's like a testament to how much he meant to her in those four months that they spent together. Yeah. Or how bored they were. I don't know. I, well, I guess if you're locked up for that long, then... But <laughs> even even then, yeah. like, I don't think that my go-to would be, like, old embarrassing memories either. So that's... No. There's got to be, you know, a lot of trust there. Yeah. It's not like they could get drunk together or anything, stuck in the gargoyle to <laughs> to get past those inhibitions. I don't know. Um, I guess we'll find out in 90 days. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Hudson starts playing this memory, this intimate memory that he says has he'd already shared with her. But it's um sharing the um explanation of the wooden horse that we came across in the previous uh chapters where he was separated from his brother jackson and that he absolutely besotted with his brother like he loved him completely and utterly and delilah took him away from him um and we see him like falling apart as a little boy like realizing that he might never see his brother again that his brother was being taken from him and that he gave Jackson this little wooden horse he's called it Jack so that he's never he never forgets who he is um and it was a really adorable scene and then Cyrus comes in and tells him to use the pain and the room just explodes everything like disintegrates into dust apart from Cyrus um and that's when grace really understands what power hudson has and it's not just this is what he can do but also he can choose there's restraint to leave cyrus yeah um and i think that's when she starts going holy fuck yeah that's what he can do um and um this this is the first time we actually get to experience what delilah is like as a person as well the mother of jackson and hudson and uh, it starts to kind of give you thought as to why they're the way that they are. And it's not just that 
because they're not cold. Neither, neither of them are a cold, deducting, sinister person. Neither of them gaslight anybody or abuse anybody. But at the same time, when you've lived in a home like that, for not not just your childhood, but as a vampire, it's severely elongated as a time frame, as a, as a period of time. They've probably spent like a hundred plus years under this reign of terror from their terrifying parents. It's no wonder they are a bit distrusting and don't want to uh, share secrets and share things about themselves because whenever you share anything like that with a parent like that, and, and this comes from my own experience, it's it's used against you as leverage. They will guilt trip you. They will use anything that you love as a weak point. And this is when we start working out that Delilah and Cyrus aren't just sadistic, but they're manipulative to, like, the nth degree. And, uh, yeah, it really makes you go, oh, that's the way that... That's the reason why they are the way they are. And, uh, yeah, it's a really sad origin story. You And I kind of hope we never get to read it, because I don't want to. I might cry for the whole thing. You went through such detail in that, and my only note was, what? A cold British mother demands that her child return to his studies? What a curveball. <laughs> and, then, and then after Hudson explodes everything in the room, Cyrus is like, I'll get you a puppy tomorrow. I'm like, where's the puppy? <laughs> <laughs> Did the puppy ever arrive? I don't think so. <laughs> no. I want a book about Hudson and his puppy. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they'll get a puppy now that he's not under his parents he could get one himself he can literally buy anything he is rich what if cyrus made him kill the puppy oh no, no i don't want to read that now <laughs> oh god yeah that's so I, th I it's just like oh okay maybe that was also a form of manipulation like oh yeah well. you did like, good i'll get i'll get give you an item that's that's always a uh, another key yeah. point of manipulation where do this for me and i'll buy you an item yeah i'll give you a reward it will be a monetary thing it will never be praise it will never be love yeah. but i will buy you a thing um and i can't remember when Hudson says that the reason why he stopped using his power because he he's, he hasn't used it since and it was because his his dad ran out of things that he loved to threaten him with. Yeah. And I really don't want to know what happened to the puppy. Oh, no. <laughs> it's all coming together. I don't want to read that that's, section of that's the story. That's like all those books and movies where it's like they, they make you love the animal and then they're like, okay, now shoot it. <laughs> like, yep. That's yeah. And I will cry hands down if any like animal gets killed or anything. I I am not as affected by humans or, oh, or yeah. vampires or whatever. When they die, I'm like, oh, that's sad. <laughs> that's the only way I could watch we sat and watched all the John Wick movies and I was the, the only thing that can allow me to watch those movies is knowing that Keanu Reeves is gonna go just shoot everybody for killing that puppy. He just, he murders everybody <laughs> for killing that puppy. I'm like, yeah, you go, Keanu. You kill those assholes. Yeah. So do you think this would be a good time to head into spoilers? I think it's about that time. Everybody better scoot out or you're going to have Cordy Court spoily spoiled for you. Not Cordy Court. Not no. Cordy Court. <laughs> I, so I didn't have any him? spoilers, so it's all you. Yeah. You go, girl. Woo. This is Amber's episode. Amber Amber had like the most like depth and my only note, I didn't even say it. My my main note was chicken whisper. <laughs> Cuz and yes, power. Yeah. <laughs> Slay, Slay queen. Chicken whisper. That was that that scene made me laugh where she was Grace was talking about getting chased by a by a chicken. A rabbit chicken. A, rab a rabbit chicken. And then Hudson's like, no, chickens can't get rabies. <laughs> She's like, what are you, a chicken whisperer? And then he looks at her dead panty. He's like, yes, that's me, Hudson the chicken whisperer. <laughs> that, that should be the episode I love their interaction title. so much. Yes. Hudson the chicken whisperer. Okay. 
Spoilery so, spoilers. Spoilers. And this is definitely about court, so this is your last opportunity. Last warning. To leave. Um, so Hudson is talking about the memory that he shared with Grace and she starts to talk like, oh, Hud, like, like pity him. Or, oh, my or Hudders. Feel... Yeah, and he goes, no, 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 stop. And he says, I don't have very many childhood memories, at least not ones that a human would understand. And it made me think, is this Hudson sparing Grace from the knowledge about the descent and just how abused he was? Because he wouldn't have had many memories because he was in a, a box. Yeah, he the was whole in the whole time. They locked all. They locked him and um, the sister into the crypts for what? They only let them out every t- like ten hours every month, every few months, something like that. Yeah, and it and it was particularly bad with um, the sister who yeah. I've forgotten the name. <laughs> because Isadora. They also realized in court that they would strategically time the releases because otherwise Hudson and Jackson would have never known that they that she existed. Yeah. So, yeah, they they strategically booked in appointments to go and wake them up. And yeah, um Hudson speaks about how he would notice the passage of time not because his parents would kind of say, "Oh, it's been this many months," but because like technology moved on and got more modern and and things like that that's just horrific like you have no idea how long you've been down there you also have no no idea whether your parents are lying to you like you could wake up and they go yeah it's been three months but actually it's been three years like the passage of time to him probably has stopped having any kind of concept because he is living day to day as i am just so glad to be free so when Grace talks about being imprisoned or like stuck in her gargoyle or when they're in the prison, I have noticed and I didn't and I didn't notice up until I read this particular scene and it was about him, like not many, many child memories. He never has an issue with being restrained or incarcerated. Yeah, even in court um, when he he just kind of he kind of goes peacefully when they yeah. But even when when Yuri takes him into the dungeons at the Dragon Court, he goes without question. Mm-hmm. And when they get him at um, graduation to take him to the the prison, he he just kind of goes. Yep. And I'm and I'm like, if that was me, because both of, or you, both of us suffer from anxiety. So the, the one thing that we would not want is to ever feel confined ever again. Whereas I think that Hudson's just come to a point of acceptance where it's just a normality for him, and that's even worse. Yeah. So yeah, that was one of my points. And uh, the other point was that I'll never make you choose, Grace. How could I when I know that you'd never choose me? <laughs> and this is re- this is this is repeated forever. It's almost almost like Hudson almost can't believe that Grace would ever choose him because he doesn't feel like he has the self um, belief that he's worthy he's the opposite he's the opposite of jacob in the twilight series because he's like accepting the fact that she'll never choose him whereas jacob's like no you you must choose me you have to choose me i need you to choose like i'm I'm the better choice yeah i will never stop i'm the one who's alive yeah yeah and i just I, i don't know whether it's just a case of him just not caring about himself in that way where he's like i i understand why you wouldn't choose me Rather than, because he, he's always insulting Jackson. He knows that Jackson is a terrible, terrible choice. He is constantly talking about how, as a mate, he is rubbish. That he doesn't do any of the things that Hudson would do if he was a mate. But at the same time, he doesn't believe that Grace would ever choose him. So that's not believing that Jackson is a better choice. That's choosing that the lesser of two evils is to choose Jackson because... I am not worthy of being your mate. 
<laughs> makes it so much worse. Yeah. Like, he has absolutely no confidence in himself. Which is crazy because he's super confident. He's super confident, but I think it's a mask. It is. I think it's it's something that he's, like, like wearing the Armani suit and and things like that is, like, how do you put on a front of confidence? You dress up. You make sure that you are impeccable at all times, which is the whole, like, removing invisible lint, which I've never read more in a book, ever. I don't know. Um, Reese does pick, it a lot too, where he picks. I know. It. I don't understand. I don't understand. I've never known uh, more people to remove invisible specks of fluff from their suit, as in young adult romance. But uh, yeah, um, I just think that he he clearly has the confidence. So why why doesn't he believe that he could be a good partner for her? <laughs> he doesn't want to get his hopes up. He doesn't want to, because every time he does, it ends up just hurting him more. Also, everything that he's ever loved has been used against him. So maybe as a um, self-protecting mechanism where he he knows that, well, if I don't have her and she doesn't want me in that way, then she can't be used against me to hurt me. Um, and maybe now Cyrus is put away for good that he might actually be able to concentrate on the fact that him and Grace can love each other and be happy. Well, I maybe. don't know. There's a whole other book coming, so obviously not. <laughs> Ugh. I don't think that the book is yeah. going to be about them living happily ever after. No. No, we, we, we don't deserve that. We're terrible people. And... We don't deserve a happy ending for our favorite people. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it'll have a happy ending, but I'm sure that there's going to be large conflict <laughs> with the Shadow Grace Realm. Walks off, Grace walks off, and, off into the sunset realizing that she is hugely gay for Eden. <laughs> she She's like, you know what? On second thought, I don't know if I'm into this whole, <laughs> this whole straight thing. Yeah, like we never know. That could absolutely happen. Uh, no, Macy's Macy's got that. Macy's gonna. Well, well, no, because isn't Heather Eden with Heather? Yeah, which makes me wonder what happens when the dragon is mated with a human. Oh, I don't think that they. I don't think like. That, I don't think that's allowed unless the dynamic has changed with the. Well, I don't know, because, like, warlocks apparently have to give up their magic. Do dragons have to give something up? Is that is that a magical law, or is that a the, the council says that type law? Or the circle? I don't know, because neither Grace's mum or dad were actually human, so it didn't actually happen. But the way that Finn said it made it sound as though it just happens. That, like, the moment that you choose to be with that, that human your powers just go poof maybe Maybe. hudson took them maybe it was a lie maybe well it was a lie anyway because surely he'd have known that grace's mum was not human yeah right i i would assume yeah lying bastard how dare you uncle finn (laughs) (laughs) all right guys Thanks so much for listening. Um, We, let's see, my husband just messaged me and he's like, don't forget this episode airs on 420. And I'm like, our primary demographic is like (laughs) young, young people. So, but apparently. And I'm, and I'm a, and I'm a Brit. So (laughs) I have no idea. I was going to say, you guys, you guys can't even, it's like gas stations sell pipes here. It's like a strange foreign thing over there but um, <laughs> Starlet, Starlet took me to a like a real like hippie vibe town and I just stood in wonder like, at like, all the paraphernalia that was on the walls so, I was like what is going on so normal here it's everywhere and we're not even Ohio isn't even a legal state it's just medically legal but Michigan is is a totally pretty sure Michigan's a legal state I don't know so anyway ha- about drugs happy let's <laughs> Happy 420 to those who celebrate. Enjoy your Doritos and Mountain Dew. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Chicken Whisperer. <laughs> <laughs>